Hello everyone and welcome to construction of the Mir Space Station Around the Moon in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. Previously I had built the International Space Station around the Earth and I wanted to do Mir, but building Mir around the Earth seemed rather simple, so hence building it around the Moon. This was of course all done during live streams as the International Space Station construction was and I am using here the Energia Launcher or Vulcan with four boosters, uh, one way or another you can think of it. Usually when it's only four boosters, oh we have a little bit of a fairing mishap there, uh, separating off with the four boosters, but when there's four boosters I normally call it Energia, uh, even though Energia only had the payload on the side, it's complicated. Uh, but when there's eight boosters I call it Vulcan and there we go shut down of the core stage and it's carrying the Ves Vesuvius stage up there with an RD57M and there goes one of our solar panels because of the other other fairing uh, unfortunately those fairings separated a little bit awkwardly so we'll have to take that into consideration later on the plume on the RD57 here isn't working yet but I fixed that for later launches right now it's just not working so not only did we decide to build Mir around the moon, we decided to put it into a polar orbit at uh, 86 degrees because that's apparently one of the frozen orbits where the mass concentrations don't affect stations much, so we can put it in a low orbit and it won't deorbit like that. Um, that was from a NASA article, so I'll take their word for it. 86 degrees it is. So here is the Mir core module being placed into that orbit by a Briz stage that's Briz with also the toroidal tank around and I added a few engines to it in place of, Briz normally has four verniers instead of four, the four verniers I put four of the main Briz engines so it doesn't have an hour long burn time so we needed to fix the solar panel that got damaged by that fairing and so I prepared a Soyuz but a special Soyuz as you can see it had a KIS container and we needed a special launcher for it to get this Soyuz over to the moon and so I used the Centaur X from my ULA Vulcan this is gonna get complicated there's the Soviet slash Russian Vulcan with a K and then there's the ULA Vulcan with a C this is the ULA Vulcan that I made and it's the upper stage of that on top of a proton so it's the proton rocket unfortunately it didn't hot stage the second stage there um, and then the Vulcan Centaur X upper stage. Except, instead of RL-10s uh, in concession to launching out of Baikonur, we put RD-0146s, which are the Russian equivalent of the RL-10. So, anyway, unfortunately, we when we reached orbit, we didn't have enough Delta V to go to the moon and do all the things. So, instead, I put more boosters. <laughs> that That mission also revealed the fact that the Soyuz heat shield was not good enough for lunar re-entry so yeah um, no coming back straight from the moon with that Soyuz heat shield we'll have to do something else but those boosters that I added onto the Proton are the Atlas V boosters they're AJ-60s and I just put them in the gaps between the structure of the first stage there so six of those AJ-60 boosters and that got us uh, enough of a way into our launch so that we could get enough Delta V to go to the moon with this. So there you have it. And that's what we need to make Proton into a proper lunar launcher. With uh, The service module of the Soyuz there is a Briz. That's the Briz without the toroidal tank. I'm really fond of Brizzes, even though they occasionally randomly explode or stuff. But uh, they're handy stages, I'll give you that. Uh, so here we are uh, making orbit there. And this time we have enough to go ahead and go to the moon. So this is the lunar transfer with the four RD0146s. So yeah, burn time's still pretty long. We needed to do a correction here because we're launching from Baikonur and I needed to do a correction, I mean course correction, a pretty hefty one but we had enough Delta V so I went with it. So here we go with the Briz stage. So again five of the Briz engines here to cut down on the burn time, it's still a pretty long burn time. And 
that is what our approach looks like, which is why the polar orbit is going to be a consistent pain in the rear end. Uh, we're capturing into loose orbit first, and then we have to correct our inclination using this burn right here, more than 400 meters per second there. And we're correcting about 90 degrees of different, or maybe it was less than that on this one. But it's an obscene amount of inclination difference that we have to correct. That's why we got into loose orbit to do that higher up. And here we are with the rendezvous with the mirror core and having docking ports issues as they wobble. But there we go. Okay, so our first crew has been delivered and off goes the briz on the mirror core module. We don't need that anymore. But unfortunately, I hadn't put the, um, a control core on it. I put structure instead of the control core. So later on, we'll be putting a control core there instead so that we can control it as it was it was left adrift. Okay, so next up, we are launching the next module, which is Kavant 1. I'm probably mispronouncing that. And that's lighter than the mirror core module by a lot. So we have margin. Not that we necessarily needed it, but... Um, always good. So Kavant 1 is an astrophysics module. And so it's got the experiments inside and all that business. It actually has a long truss going out, poking out. And I tried to put that in a KIS container underneath it uh, as part of the bridge stage. It's right on top of the bridge stage there. But for some reason, even though I thought I put the parts in once we get to the station, they're not going to be in there. I was going to create the truss via EVA, but no luck. I still haven't actually made that truss yet, so this construction will not include that that truss. I don't know what it has. It's sort of like a, a magnetometer truss, but I don't think it's a magnetometer truss. Okay, so here we are doing the burns. Uh, generally, all these missions involve the transfer burn to the moon, then a mid-course correction to get the inclination, and then a loose capture around the moon, and then the inclination correction around the moon to match with the station, and then other rendezvous burns. So it's a whole business. But here we are docking Kavant 1 to the Mirror Core module. Now, uh, in real life around the Earth, the Mirror Core module is launched on February 19th, 1986. Kavant 1, March 31st, 1987. The, these were all on a Proton K. And here we are, I find out that my KIS container does not have that trust, those trust parts. So we just proceed with an EVA with Nauskerman to attach the solar panels, uh, the missing one from Mir, uh, the Mir core, and also Mir core gets a third solar panel after the fact. Initially it has two, but it got a third one later on. And so we're gonna attach that third one as well. So that's the solar panel that we lost due to that fairing collision. And I also decided to take these thrusters from down here on the, um, on the Cavance Briz stage and put them onto the core because I had forgotten to put additional RCS onto the core. And that's actually why we had kept the core's Briz stage attached because otherwise it didn't have enough control. So we do that and then Nauskerman applies the third solar panel, which is what you see here. It's different from the other two. And I'm extending the, uh, the second solar panel, the one that get, got ripped off. And then that's the third solar panel. So we're back to normal, the way we should be. And that was a very successful EVA for us. And we separate off the Briz stage with the KIS container that didn't have the parts that we needed. And that's what it looks like right now. So on to the launcher Kavant 2, which was a basic augmentation thing. Um, so the core module had the living quarters and the environmental systems. It's like Zvezda on the ISS. And in fact, exactly like Zvezda on the ISS. And then uh, Kavant 2 just has more space, some instrumentation, some space for experiments, that kind of thing. Oh, and also um, basically an MMU kind of thing. But I don't know if they've ever used that. I forget. But yep, so a whole bunch of expansions to the station. 
And here we go, making orbit with the Energia core. And this is Deku's Energia mod. The Buren from the Energia mod does not work very well. Oh, we got an extra little spin there. Okay, trying to start the RD-57 to finish orbit. And yeah, so the Buren does not work very well in that mod. And I think there was a landing gear problem and there are other problems. But the energy rocket, Vulcan rocket and all that business seems to work fine. So, uh, except I have to fix that plume. So I've got RO configs for that. And here we are with the transfer burn to the moon. So Kvant 1 is a full-size TKS kind of module. It's a lot like Zarya, I guess. And the usual brizz. I'm sticking to the brizzes. Now the thing about the brizzes is that they don't have forward-facing thrusters. So that's uh, they can't dock these modules to the station. And that will come up later on. So inclination correction and we will have to let go of the module. The module has to do the docking on its own now because the point that actually does the docking was attached to the Briz. And so here we go lining up and I didn't retract that solar panel. I decided to challenge it and there we go. All right so that's Kvant 2. And next up will be the Crystal module. Crystal. Uh, I'm probably not pronouncing that, but anyway. Um, Crystal. I think that was how it was supposed to be. Crystal. It's a technology module. I think what they're trying to do was test various things for space industry, like materials stuff. Um, apparently there were other experiments involved. So it's another science module, but it also has docking ports. Uh, the docking ports on it are the APAS docking ports, so they're the Buran or shuttle kind. And off go the boosters. And here we are making, or well, we dumped that. Uh, all the core stages end up falling short of orbit. Uh, RD-57, the Vesuvius stage, finishes orbit each time. Okay, and there we go. So I extend the solar panels, of course, to get power. I don't know when they would extend the solar panels, probably after docking, and they just go on battery until they dock, maybe. I don't know how long the batteries last on these. But uh, obviously for a transfer all the way out to the moon, we have to extend the solar panels first. And this is the correction burn, make course correction, and making orbit. Nice landscape. I think I've got the 16K textures for the moon here, along with the Earth. Uh, the new real solar system 16K textures. Takes a lot of RAM though, and I don't use all of the 16K textures. I only use it for Earth, Moon, and Mars. The rest I mix and match with the other packs the lesser resolution packs. Uh, retract the solar panels because I don't know if this one has its solar panels extended, maybe, but just for safety's sake first. So lining up and docking to the core module. Well, you can see, uh, yeah, it would have to keep its solar panels retracted. It did come with solar panels, but it can't extend them with uh, the core's solar panel right there. Okay, so there we go. We are making progress. No pun intended. Next up is Spectre. Spectre has extra solar panels. It's basically a power module. Um, instead of having just two or three like uh, mirror, it's got four solar panels. Unfortunately, uh, there was a collision with it with a progress, so that made it uh, unusable. But so Kavant 2 
was launched on November 26, 1989, so that's two years after Kavant 1. Uh, Crystal was launched May 31st, 1990. So the first four bits were launched basically within four years. Well, a little bit more than four years. But then there was this huge gap because the Soviet Union fell. <laughs> it's a good, good excuse. Um, and so Crystal was launched in 1990, but Spectre was launched in 1995. So, five years later. And here we go. Making our rendezvous. And there's the station. Still, thanks to the fact that all these modules have independent um, propulsion, helps a whole lot. And, of course, the fact that we don't have to bring the shuttle back down every time, that uh, makes things a lot quicker. So construction of this was a breeze by comparison. Uh, no, another pun. Anyway, um, so there we go. Spectre is docked. And so we only have two modules left after this. So I'm extending the other two solar panels there, which act tilt at an angle because that part of the module is uh, angled. So the next thing is a docking module. Now in real life the docking module was brought up by the space shuttle Atlantis. The only US contribution, well I wouldn't say only, okay, the only main module US contribution to the station and it was brought up on November 15th 1995 and it was to extend, so the uh, sorry, uh, the Crystal module had the um, A-pass docking port, but it was too close to everything else for the shuttle to dock there. So this docking module just gives it a little bit more room. It's sort of like the docking modules. Um, it, it reminds me of Rasvit. I think it reminds me of Rasvit. Uh, so it's sort of like that, and it gives a little bit more room so the shuttle can dock safely. This is the... Transverne, which included a little bit of an inclination change, that's why it's sort of at a weird angle. But we have to still do more inclination. I think I timed this really badly, so that's why. So we're still bringing it with an Energia and then Priz and all, but there will be a launch out of Cape Canaveral next because I've made a mistake. Well, first there's a glitch, if you will. Not not really a glitch, but uh, unforeseen circumstance whereby the forward-facing RCS thrusters on the Soyuz are not getting fed fuel. But one reason for that is the mistake I made, which is not to provide the Soyuz with independent fuel. It only has the fuel from the Briz. Because the service module is gone, right? There's no service module there for the Soyuz. And the Briz is on the opposite side of the docking module. So the first thing is I have Bearfell Kerman. Bearfell is actually a viewer on Twitch and he paid Struts, the in-stream currency, in order to visit Mir. And so I'm putting Bearfell to use as an engineer on this flight to reposition the RCS thrusters uh, to where they will feed fuel from the Briz. They weren't feeding fuel from the Briz on the orbit, orbital module, I don't know why. But he couldn't get back in for some reason. We couldn't get him back into the Soyuz, so I had him float onto Mir just like this. So that's how Barafel visited Mir as a tourist. Actually, this whole series on Twitch uh, during these live streams is meant to be a space tourism thing whereby viewers pay these struts in order to visit various locations. Uh, we've got two headed out to Mars, we've got some on Skylab, and some on the ISS. Uh, you'll see Skylab later. Uh, it's actually Skylab 2. Anyway, but the problem here is that we can't really use the Soyuz to dock the docking module, which was the original intention. This is, this is bad. And somebody noted that I did hit that solar panel. I thought I hadn't. I thought I had cleared it. You can see, I, I don't know, maybe that solar panel has a big collider or something, but I thought I cleared it, but the station did fire its RCS thrusters as if I collided with it. So 
Anyway, that was obviously not a good docking location, so I went with this one on the tail of Kvant 1. Uh, so, anyway, the original intention was to have the Soyuz dock the docking module to the station, but since it doesn't have fuel on its own, we can't do that. And the Briz doesn't have forward-facing RCS. We could place, place those on there. I could have had Barafel do that. But I decided not to, and instead came up with a completely other mission. And this one was launched out of Cape Canaveral on my Kasei rocket, which you could think of as like an SLS with five RS-68s, no boosters, but a much better upper stage, which is actually a vacuum-optimized RS-68. If you haven't watched my Mars colonization series, uh, which involved the Kasei rocket, that'll, that'll be good enough. Anyway, so it's a fairly capable Hydrolox rocket, and the first thing we need to do is send another one of our tourists um, over to Skylab 2. So we're making a stop in low Earth orbit. That's why we're going out of Cape... Well, that's one reason why we're going out of Cape Canaveral. It's just fun to come out of Cape Canaveral with the Katniss Cape Canaveral mod making you looking, look so good. But anyway, so we're going to drop off one of our space tourists. It's Nico. And it's Nico paid uh, 50 struts to visit Skylab 2. That's my ED4 vacuum engine there, though I uh, sort of rebuilt these stages for this purpose. The ED4 vacuum is supplemented by some vernier thrusters that are going to help us rendezvous with Skylab 2. There is Skylab 2. It did lose a solar panel again. Uh, I don't know how that happened. We haven't fixed that yet. I did add a Unity module to Skylab 2 so that more things could dock with it though. And that includes an A-pass on the nose there. Not the full adapter, not the PMA. We just went straight with the A-pass. And yeah, getting our tourist into Skylab and departing for the moon now with our other pilot. Now this is sort of vaguely appropriate because there was a Soyuz mission T-15 that visited two space stations, Salyut 7 and Mir, but that one did not go from Earth to the moon, of course. Uh, so we've, we've, and of course, uh, Salyut was not Skylab. But anyway, this is our actual spacecraft uh, making orbit around the moon, but we've had a flaw, uh, that is Boiloff. We have lost a lot of Delta V due to boil off, and this spacecraft can no longer reach the station. So I sent one of the tugs that was supposed to move the docking module. See, I've got two tugs at the bottom there, and these are from my ISS construction series. So I sent the tug on its own to go to the space station because it has enough Delta V. And so here it is rendezvousing with Mir, and it'll grab the docking module and position it where it needs to go. Unfortunately, that does leave our Kerbal stranded in moon orbit, but that Kerbal does have more than 50 days worth of food, water, and oxygen because that pod is configured for four, four people, and four people for two weeks. So there's plenty of buffer, so that Kerbal will not starve or anything. And here we go. Uh, we separated off the docking module with, with the Briz, but I've made a mistake here, and that's to turn on some magnetism on the claw. And this caused bad things to happen. Bad Gemini 8 kind of things or something. You can see how much our periapsis is moving there. I point to it during the stream, uh, and we're going far away from the station. And I just decided that this was a glitch. I didn't realize what the magnetism thing was, so I uh, reloaded the persistent file, which happened to be right when we undocked the docking module from the station, and this time I didn't turn on the magnetism, and we're good. There were a few other mishaps that I didn't show. Um, one staging mishap with the Kasei rocket, and previous to... Um, the first launch with the Mir core module, I think we had another fairing mishap, so just to account for other issues that we had that I haven't mentioned already. And here we go, docking module being placed where it ought to be placed on the crystal module. And there we go. So 
that's where it needs to be. And finally, we launch the final module of Mir, Perota. And this was launched on April 26, 1996. And it is an uh, Earth remote sensing module. So, taking measurements of the Earth in various spectra and such things like that. It has a big radar dish on one side to do these things. One thing it doesn't have is solar panels. It's the only thing on the station that doesn't have solar panels. The station has solar panels poking off in every direction, but this doesn't have solar panels, so we had to add solar panels to the Briz stage. The core stage concludes its burn, and we have separation, separation, and ignition of the RD-57. RD-57 is not unlike uh, Blue Origin BE-3U, actually. It's very similar to that. And there's the weird fairing separation that has caused us a few problems. The Perota module is very different from the others in the general shape of it. It's its own sort of thing. Actually, Spectre is pretty unique, too. They are all variations on a theme because they're all based on like TKS modules and the DOS modules and all, but they are their own thing. So here, Briz is getting the module into orbit around the moon, and then we're doing the inclination correction for the last time. Well, not the last time because we're going to have other tourists visiting Mir, I'm sure, so we're probably going to have to do this whole business over and over and over again. But here we are, handling the rendezvous. At least I have some practice with this now. And we can access the polar ice. Hopefully there is polar ice in, in the Kerbal rendition of the moon. We'll see. I don't have a, a resource scanner in orbit around the moon right now. There is another station around the moon though. There's an Almaz station that we use to test the whole use of Energia to launch these things over to the moon. Okay, so docking Perota. And... And... There we have it. Alright, so... Uh, for the most part, Mir is complete. We might need to take off that tug, add that trust to Kvant 1, but I'm calling it complete from here. Our final little uh, transfer briz uh, deorbits itself. Lots of Delta V, but it's just engines on with a tank, so obviously it would have a lot of Delta V. All right, so there it is. Mir around the moon. And with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.